this first video in the demo series, we're going to take a look at what we need to do to get an initial SDK scenario set up, a satellite object inserted so that we can start to do some initial configuration in Solus. To start, we're going to create an initial scenario. We'll call it demo scenario. We'll leave the start and stop times that it provided us as well as the central body being Earth. We'll let that load up and what we're interested in is just inserting a simple circular orbit. Our concentration here is configuring Solus and showing the capabilities that Solus provides, not doing any detailed mission analysis at this point. So to start, we'll select satellite and just use the orbit wizard the SDK provides. We'll name our satellite demo sat and then for purposes of a future video so that we can start to do some target tracking and target analysis in North America. We're going to change our inclination to 80 degrees. Then we'll set our altitude at a thousand kilometers. And then we're going to adjust our RAN so that we come down through the middle of North America. The last thing we need to do on this page is we're going to provide a 3d model graphic for our satellite. And we're going to use a model of the near NASA spacecraft. And I'll explain why in a second. So we'll say OK and accept those changes. We don't need any more satellite objects at this time. So we'll close that and then tile our windows so we can see things a little bit better. Um, so here's our initial orbit that we set up. Um, and then we'll come over here real quick, double click on our satellite and just do a little bit more initial configuration so that we're all set and ready to go. Um, rather than start over here, I'm going to adjust our true anomaly so that we start just above North America. Uh, so to do that, I will adjust the true anomaly to 100 degrees and see what that looks like. So that looks pretty good and we'll leave it there. The last thing we want to do with these properties of the satellite is add in some vectors so that we can start to visualize the orientation of the spacecraft. So we'll zoom into the spacecraft model. And so here's the model that I chose. This is near. And so I chose this model because it is very symmetric and easy for us to visualize as we start to configure some different pointing modes for our spacecraft. So I just inserted some body axes so that we can see its orientation. So we have this nice um, Y and X, Z, and all these solar panels are aligned in the plus or minus X or Y, and our body spacecraft is in the Z direction. So this makes it nice and easy for us to visualize these modes as we start to configure them. The last thing we'll do is we're going to be interested in this demo in a sun vector, so a sun pointing, as well as nadir pointing, so we want a nadir vector. So we'll select those two so that we can see those two show up, and that'll help us visualize what's happening, and we'll say OK. So then we're done with our initial STK satellite configuration, and now we can move on to configuring the satellite in Solus. So to get to Solus, you just go to your satellite object, right-click, and once Solus is installed, it shows up in this properties window. And so you can start Solus directly from here. Solus stands for Spacecraft Object Library in STK. So what this allows us to do is now take the point mass that STK was using for the satellite and actually start to apply some attitude dynamics as well as configure models of actuators, sensors, an ADCS system, communication system, power thermal, and payloads. So we can actually start to add real systems onto the satellite to promote initial design phases as well as doing analysis and trades. So before we get into actually configuring our satellite, we'll do a quick overview of what Solus is providing here on the left under the different tabs. So it's showing us what our initial Solus configuration was. It allows us to select some telemetry. We'll come back to that in a minute. We can do some advanced Solus configuration, which we'll touch on in a later video where we start to actually construct our own components using the dev tool. We're going to spend most of our time here in the spacecraft simulation configuration. And so this allows us to both start to configure our spacecraft as well as start to configure the environment that it's going to live in. And so we can specify some initial conditions. We're going to leave that alone for now. You can go in and start to include some environmental disturbances, uh, gravity gradients, magnetic fields, aerodynamic solar disturbances. You can go and add in panels once we start to do power and thermal. For now, we're going to skip over that and say we don't need any environmental disturbances at this point. Um, you can configure the mass properties of your spacecraft. Um, you can configure sensors, actuators, 
mode controls, as well as your ADCS system. So to get started here, what we're going to do is actually associate some mass properties with our vehicle. So we picked the near spacecraft. It was a NASA mission. We know that its dry spacecraft mass was about 500 kilograms. So we'll use that, no reason to change it. And we'll assume it's symmetric, ignore these solar panels, and just say it's a nice cylinder body. So we have a symmetric inertia matrix. For a cylinder with this dry mass, and let's say it's uh, two meters tall um, by a meter wide. So that'll give us our some inertia properties of 650, 650, and 150 kilograms per meter squared. And then the last thing we need to do is come down here and tell it where is our spacecraft center of mass. So looking at this satellite, we'll say this thing is two meters tall and it looks like our origin is at the bottom here. So we're gonna say our center of mass lives somewhere right in the middle. So what we wanna do is come over and say our spacecraft center of mass lives negative one meter in the Z direction. And so now that we have that configured, uh, the attitude control system, once we configure it later, we'll understand where our center of mass is for the spacecraft. We can say, okay, accept all these changes. Real quickly, we'll touch on what are a few of these other tabs up here. So we configured the spacecraft mass properties. This is informing the max flight software that is running in the background what our mass properties are. So I'll stop here and emphasize, as I'll do a few times, Solus is configuring the inputs for the actual flight software that is running in the background. Max Flight Software with Odyssey Onboard Dynamic Simulation System integrated within it is running in the background once we start to do some actual Solus simulations and some Solus runs. So Solus is in a sense a front end to configuring our spacecraft actual flight software that we can then take from the file system it's generating with some minor modifications and get it onto a real target processor and actually start to do some integration on a real target and hardware. So over here on this tab where it says Odyssey Truth Model Mass Properties, this is now on the simulation side, we can start to lie to the flight software about what truth is. And so when you start to go in and be interested in your design phase of you know, you want to look at what is the stability of your ADCS system to disturbances, you can come to the truth side, check this box and start to modify or deviate the true mass properties of the vehicle from what the flight software understands. In this concept, you'll see across these, um, in particular for sensors and actuators, you can modify the true values compared to what the spacecraft understands to start to do some trades on how it's going to behave to things like manufacturing differences. Um, a few other things that you can come in, if you are going to have propellant takes, you can configure those and that'll set up the mass properties of the propellant tanks. Um, you can do the same here with the ODY uh, Odyssey simulation truth model. You can start to modify what the truth properties are and then also inform it of the vehicle state in different configurations. So we're done with mass properties. That's all set up. So we're good and happy. The next thing we're going to do within this demo is we're going to say, okay, we now have our spacecraft. Um, we're going to take a quick look at the attitude control system. At the moment, it just says perfect control. We're going to be happy with that. And it's going to just execute everything we tell it to do perfectly. Like it can execute whatever guidance command, whatever torque command we're issuing immediately without issue. Same thing with the attitude determination system. It is perfect. It knows exactly where it is and its orientation at all times. So that's fine for now. So what we're going to do in our interest now is let's set up some modes so we can start to configure the default modes that came with Max when we loaded this Solus configuration for our specific spacecraft so that we can do things like command it to do some sun tracking and command it to do some nadir tracking. So you'll notice in here you have a type and a name. So this type are the different mode types that are available straight out of the max core configuration that's provided with Solus. So we can do some idle, we can do holds, rate damping, sun acquisition, and tracking. And you can use each of these modes to configure a specific mode for your mission depending on exactly what you want to do. And what's the differences between these? You can start to specify within a tracking mode 
what your body align vector is, body clock, inertial clock, um, spacecraft um, pointing object. And so you can come in and configure special modes for your particular mission. So in this little demo mission, we're interested in SunTrack and Nader Track. And so you'll notice we have some solar panel cells on the bottom here, but not necessarily on the top. We're going to modify this a little bit and say, actually, let's assume that we have cells on both sides of these panels so that we can keep our payload pointed at the ground. And if we do want to sun track, just tip over and have the back of our panels track the sun so we can at least keep this facing somewhat down towards the nadir direction. So what we need to do is take a look at our sun track has an alignment vector of positive Z. So this right now, if we were to command it, would flip the spacecraft all the way over and point the bottom of these panels at the sun vector. So instead, we want to reverse that direction and just tell it negative Z so that when we do command it, it's going to take this and point Z in the opposite direction as the sun so that we can get our back panels pointing in the sun direction. So that's going to be our sun track mode and we'll say OK. And then the other mode we're interested in is nadir track. And we'll just take a look. Our alignment vector is the positive Z, which is what we want. So we don't need to make any modifications there. Um, as you can see, there are plenty of options you can do depending on central body. If you want to do a rotisserie, uh, what you want your clocking vector to be, it's very configurable based on the mission you're trying to accomplish and the modes you want to execute. So these are all the modes we want for this demo scenario. So we're happy. We've accepted all our changes. And so now we can go in and actually start to execute this. So to run Solus, what you do is come up here in this top left corner, you see this green box with the arrow. It's going to provide a few options. We can run a certain amount of time times real time. And so that's going to allow us to run faster than real time while also playing back data and seeing the model respond as it's simulating. You can run it in real time if you want to run it, you know, not faster than real time so that you can see things happen as they would in real time. Or if you just want to get the scenario simulated as fast as you can, you can run it as fast as possible and it won't update the 3D model here in real time, but it will allow you to play it back once it's completed. So we want to see things change as we're running it. So we're going to do run times real time and we're going to go from 10 down to five and we'll say, okay. So what this is going to do is now we are actually executing a simulation. We are using our onboard dynamic simulation system in the max flight software that is running in the background to provide this data to actually propagate attitude at the moment. Um, you see our spacecraft flipped upside down here. We did not change the initial state that STK was providing us. If we go back and take a look at the Solus page, we could have come in here and said for our initial conditions, we can specify the flight software initial condition that it thinks it started in, as well as the true simulation Odyssey initial conditions and some initial control modes. Um, we won't configure that in this video, but is definitely an option. We will just take the initial condition that STK provided us and we ended up upside down, which is okay. On this front page in the Solus run, it's providing some just general spacecraft information and health. It's telling us what's our attitude and momentum, what our batteries might be, our power, state of charge, solar panels, and our communications. You'll notice that all of this is empty at the moment because we haven't actually configured any of these yet, but we will moving forward. So for now, none of this is being updated. Um, what we are interested in is the real-time commanding. So we can, now that we have configured modes that we can issue and command, come in here and in real time, issue a command to the real max flight software that's running in the background and see it respond in STK. So we set up a couple of tracking modes. So we can pick the command we want to issue is slew to tracking, the tracking mode we want we can pick Sun or Nader. So let's say we want to flip over it first and take a look at Nader. So we'll say track to Nader. We'll prepare that command and then execute it. 
So we're going to see immediately our spacecraft respond. So what is this doing exactly? So we have not configured an ADCS control system yet. So what this is doing is issuing the command and then immediately saying, I can achieve my guidance command. It's just closing the loop through Odyssey and Max and saying, I'm achieving exactly the command I want and achieving the nadir pointing that I requested. So now we're in nadir and this command has gone through Max and been issued. We will see Max uh, respond to it. We'll see the slew duration that it picked because we have perfect control. It iterated it on th that and said that we can achieve this in 60 seconds. Um, and then we can see the Max Flight software actually uh, respond to our request and say our slew track command was accepted okay and we are going to issue it. Next, now that we've achieved our nadir track, we can come in and say, let's track the sun, prepare that command and execute it. And we will see the same thing come up now with a sun track that the Max Flight software responded and said, okay, I can respond to that. And Odyssey simulating it said, you're requesting this command to be achieved. I have perfect control, so I will immediately set the spacecraft state to that. And so we can achieve exactly what's being requested. So we have now configured the mass properties of the vehicle and then a couple modes of interest and executed a very simplistic version of our Max Flight software with Odyssey integrated to start issuing some commands. The last thing we're going to take a look at is now that we've done this, we're interested in what are the attitudes that we go through while we're doing this. So one powerful thing that Solus provides is this STK telemetry interface. And so we're going to configure that. And first we're going to stop our simulation so that we can add some telemetry to our flight software configuration. And what this is doing is we can come to this telemetry interface and add packets that are available and have been configured with the Max Flight software that is running in the background that Solus is generating the configuration for. So this is what's available in our current Max configuration. So we can come in and say, we're interested in seeing telemetry for our attitude determination. We want to say, um, we want some time for our command and data handling, um, command sequencing. I don't think we need anything from that. Um, let's take our ephemeris summary. Let's take our main guidance information. We want our mode control. We want the dynamics coming out of Odyssey as well as the ephemeris. Um, we want our power thermal. Once we configure that, uh, we'll take the Odyssey vehicle state. So what the simulation vehicle state is, as well as the normal vehicle state, which is the flight software vehicle state, what the flight software thinks the vehicle state is. So we've added all of these. If you're interested in having a higher sample period or a lower sample period, once you've added it, you can come in and say, I want a different sample rate for this telemetry data uh, and configure it there and just update the particular group or packet. The last thing to note on this page is the output destination. Um, there are three options. You can provide data only directly back to STK. So it's taking the max flight software telemetry generated by the flight software and piping it back to STK so that we can see it and interact with it and do some analysis. You can change that to just be a CSV file directly for say analysis outside of STK. If you wanted to take the telemetry data and run it through MATLAB or Python and make your own plots with your own scripts or you can do both of those options at the same time. In this case, we're just interested in the STK data provider. So that's good and we'll just say, okay. So at this point, we now have telemetry that we can get out and start taking a look at. So we are going to go in and say, let's run this again. We'll keep five times. So it's gonna restart and bring up the run window again. So we'll maximize that. So we've restarted it. We've reset our command history. We haven't issued any commands. So before we issue a command, what we can now do is now that we have telemetry, come over to the report and graph manager integrated with SDK and actually start to look at some data. So I have a few 
stock ones configured already in here, but I'll show you what that looks like. Um, to create these, you just do create a new report, um, and then you'll be brought up with some options. We have not configured actuators yet or a battery, but we have attitude information. So we can take a look at what that looks like to configure a plot. When we want to develop a plot, all of the data, remember, is being supplied back to STK user supplied data. So we want to filter on user supplied. And so everything we just picked in the telemetry interface in Solus is now available for us to see as telemetry through the STK report and graph manager. So I've already loaded in the vehicle roll pitch and yaw Euler angles in here, but to make sure those are available, those should be in the ODY ephemeris. So if we go look at the Odyssey ephemeris outputs and scroll down, we should see the vehicle pitch roll and yaw. And if we did want to change one of these and get rid of yaw, you can adjust it, add what you want to see and just say apply and okay. So those are the three variables that we're going to see once we bring up this plot. Let's make it a dynamic chart so we can see it as things change in real time. And we'll just say generate, close this window. And so now we're seeing the attitude of this vehicle as it's being simulated and updated. And so, so we can see this a little better. Let's tile these windows. and go back to our real-time commanding. So we can go back, use our slew to track, and then issue our nader tracking again. Let's get this so we can see the satellite. We'll prepare our command and execute, and we should see our Euler angles and attitude respond as it responds to this command and actually achieves a nader pointing uh, doing its slew. Same thing, now we can issue the sun track again, say prepare command, execute, and watch our attitude respond. And this is, remember, real telemetry data coming out of real Max Flight software that is living within the Odyssey simulation and communicating with STK so that we can visualize what's happening with the spacecraft as we design it. That's it for the initial configuration of Solus. In the next video, we'll start to leverage the real power of Solus and Max by configuring some subsystems.